I was amazed by the series. I, I, I have to say I didn't go to Belgium, but I've seen some photos of your new works that you did during the lockout. Yes. Lockdown, lockdown. not lockdown. <laughs> What a good, funny um, lapsus. So I, I'm amazed about your work you did for the lockdown. Could you tell me more about this work, which are very special? Yes, uh, um, during the lockdown, I went through various phases. The, the first one was I could not really make any work for a while, which is unusual in my case. Um, I was just um, mesmerized by the general madness. Then uh, I made a group of uh, seascapes where I painted the seashore with uh, debris of, uh, you know, sea empty seashells and broken toys. And uh, the date started to appear. I, each work has the date of the day where I made it, when I made it. Which is and very then, new, no? Uh, I've never done that before. It, it makes sense. Um, I don't know why it makes sense. Um, in the last year, I've been looking at ukiyo-e ukiyo um, prints, you know, Japanese prints, which they often have these inserts, this, uh, the image is somehow defaced by these labels with poems. or So maybe it came from there. Um, You know, now I'm an older artist, I've been told that I should switch from pathos to ethos, you know. I've no. always been indifferent to history and partial to love and to uh, eroticism and to joy. And um, I read somewhere that at a certain age you should uh, begin to think in terms of ethos. So maybe the date is my compromise with ethos to let history come into the picture. Ah. I'm not fond of history because history brings in also blood and I'm too uh, fond of my fellow human beings to wish for blood. You know, I don't care for history. I don't care for bloodshed. But anyway, I'm... this is to make a long story short. Um, then I went into as the folly of mankind is manifesting more and more, I went into looking at back at some of the original sources of my work, which begin with my exploration of iconography from the Middle Ages. And I, there is a, a whole repertoire in the Middle Ages of, uh, they, they're called in Italian, they're called Grilli. And the great What is Greeley? What is Greeley? It's one of the formative readings in my very early age as a painter. I found this book about Greeley, about... Uh, they are the same iconographical source that was at the, at the, uh, used by Bosch for those figures. Uh, ah. they, they, he didn't make any of that up. That was iconography which was in the Gothic cathedrals, way up into the Gothic cathedrals there were sculptures depicting these multiform figures. And this, uh, the reading of this book is by an, an Estonian art historian whose name I absolutely cannot pronounce. Um, he explored the sources of this iconography that goes back to the Romans, to Islam, go way back. And so I simply took those images as a score, like almost like a musical score, and played to the music. And so you have the date, and then you have these multiform images that come straight from the Middle Ages. And what does it mean? What do they mean? What do they mean? They have to do with, um, um, with transformation. So, Everything I make has to do with transformation, really. These are only special because finally all of these things are catching up with us. Better Western? Them, you know? Sorry. And, but where, where are you now? Where, mm -hmm. are you, where are you based for now? 
I am in the same apartment where I've always been in New York, walking distance from my studio. Um, I made a point, you know, today is September 11, and uh, when September, I mean, when September 11 happened, I, I live a few blocks away from the World Trade Center. I made a point not to leave the city. Um, I think if you live somewhere, you know, it's like, to love a city is like being in a love relation. What do you do when your lover has a problem, you leave? I mean, no, right? You yes. don't leave. You wait for the problem to be over, then maybe you leave, but not at the moment of the problem, no, no. But uh, you also live uh, in India, right? And India has a lot of problems too. <laughs> Yes, this is for me very shocking now that the all the visas to India have been cancelled for the time being. And um, even if I, my base in New York, but my my lungs are India, and so for the first time in my life, I I can't have this escape in my mind that I can go to India, you know. But I cannot go to India right now. I talk on the like this on the phone on. First time with friends in India, but it's shocking for me not to have that sense of liberty that I have thinking of that. For so many years now? Since I was 19 years old. So India is very important to you, right? It's a major... It's very important to me, whatever India means. You know, India means different things to different people. And uh, my... Uh, educated friends in India, they make fun of me because they they think that I, they say that I think I own the country, I'm the only person to understand India. In fact, I, I do think I'm the only person to understand, who understands India. Most in Indians? The, I'm the only person who gets it. Um, because in India, in the rural part of India, there is still, there are still people who live according to a sense of the sacred. They have a sense of the sacred, you know. They what? approach life with, a sense, with that kind of wealth, you know. Uh, one of the cliché about India is poverty, but I would say poverty is a Western notion because when, when you, you know, when you think that life is about conquering and achieving and acquiring something, you, you are admitting that you are poor. When you think that life is about giving back through through ritual, through prayer, to sacrifice, to pilgrimage, to give back what you've been given, then you that means you're wealthy. You, you, your point of view is the point of view of a wealthy person who has everything, who has been given everything, and is giving back. And so, when you were painting this this work during the lockdown. Uh, what is there a link to India and Indian spirituality? Well, yes, that is always there. That is always there. But what does that mean? You know, spirituality is such an ambiguous. All the words now are so hollowed out and so ambiguous. And uh, but but see, to make spirituality means to have a sense that your identity, yourself, is delusional, is a fabrication, it has no substantial reality, and that each of us is, at the core, is a witness of existence, is basically each of us is one eye of, of God, that God sees the world through each of us, through a particular eye, and that our duty is to be a witness. And if you look at, at things that way, you are less, um, you suffer less because you do not, you can feel sadness without being sad, basically. Or you can, you can witness the suffering without, without being the suffering. But so... That's spirituality, that's all there is. And this is a point of view which I've encountered in India, but is many traditions, they basically, they take you there. I mean, it doesn't have to be India. Yeah. 
but you you said you don't want to paint blood but in in this work there's a lot of red <laughs> well i find very amusing how because i'm fond of color and maybe i know something about color um the work i make is there is something very um gentle and seductive about it but if you stop and look at the images they're quite um, shocking many times but this is not something i i want to do i just um, encounter these images there's nothing i can do about it and when you do it it takes one day or how did it work it takes one day so yeah. I don't know how to explain it, but is there something absolutely unique in your body of work about these works? They are very special. They are. Um, and at the same time, there is a, a consistency, you know, what I make. I always, I like to be in a, always in the position of a beginner. I like to be in an uncharted territory, always. So I set up. A number of rules and then I play according to those rules and the new body of work appears and uh, to me it's very important to have that sense of uh, of being into the un you know diving into the unknown not not to repeat myself and uh, pardon me for asking more I mean down to the earth thing but um, yes. <laughs> well, but so, everything, everything we have said so far is very down to earth. <laughs> okay, so even deeper to earth. Uh, to earth. Um, what, what, about, what do you think, what you feel about the art system, the art world today? Because you knew him from the past, right? Already. So what, what, what's your feeling about the art, the art market today? Oh, that is too down to earth. I'm not responding <laughs> to that. <laughs> I knew! <laughs> but you show your work in New York? Yes, I have an exhibition in New York. I will send you the link. I have an exhibition. For, is the continuation. Is an exhibition that happened in London and in New York with a book. And is a 40 years of works on paper, watercolors and pastels. Where is it? It is uh, now open. Is it is with uh, uh, Levi Gorby? Ah, oui, bien sûr. So, why did you choose to show these fantastic works in Belgium, in Bru in Brussels? Why? Yes. Oh, because uh, um, the gallery, they are friends of mine, and they were very keen for the last four years to do an exhibition, and um, so it happened that the exhibition came about at this uh, unusual times. And so my last question is about your next dream. What do you want now? What do you dream about now? What do I dream about? Um, oh, I dream of getting on an airplane. <laughs> <laughs> I usually am afraid of flying, but right now I would give anything to be sitting on an airplane. <laughs> to go to India? <laughs> I think the minute I can, I mean, some friends of mine, they're traveling. I'm reluctant to travel at this moment. But when um, when this crisis will be over, I think there will be a lot of traveling going on. I think I need to see Ispahan. Ispahan? Yes. Wow, you have never been? No. So that's your next dream? Yes, I need to see Isfahan. And what about going to India? Where should you go? Um, that's the first thing I will do, actually. With, I will go to India. I Where? also am making, I'm making work. I make a lot of, of, of work in India. Right now, the exhibition in New York, I, I went yesterday to see it, and I noticed that four-fifths of the works on the wall is made in India. So I, I would love to go back. And uh, but where shall you go in India? And I think I will also spend more time in India in the future. But where? Um, my base is uh, Chennai, is the south. Ah, okay. Bon, I super. Think I, to spend, I think I would like very much to spend more time there. I'm a little, uh, you know, the, the team of the West 
I was always reacting against the teams of the West, and now it's so tiresome. All this me, 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 me is exhausting. It's a nice music, after all. Is what? It's a nice music. Me, 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 me. But I, 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 Sometimes in when I'm in Chennai, I meet someone who's doing some stupid job, and and why are you doing? I ask why are you doing this, and and the person will reply, it's my duty. I'm just longing to be somewhere where I, there is a chance to get this answer. It's my duty. Well, and in New York, how is it now? When you go out? New York, I'm, uh, you know, I'm very fond of New York and um, the city is wounded. The city is wounded. We have had very difficult times. We had, um, what do you call it, curfews. We had, but now it's a little bit better. But it is a wounded city. Bon. Merci, monsieur. Shukri à monsieur. Oh, very nice. I'll do the same. <laughs> bye bye, thanks a lot. Very nice to see you, thank you. Hope to meet you in flesh. We'll, yes, we'll meet in person soon enough. Bye bye. <laughs> bye.